Hello, today I'm going to show you how to, how to solve two problems on my ultimate pendulum worksheet. Um, today this is going to be really just dealing with how to use the uh, the formula for a pendulum for the period of a pendulum that's seen up here in the upper right hand corner. And we're going to do these first few problems and this should help you with the rest of the worksheet. Okay. And the first problem states, what is the period on earth of a pendulum with a length of 2.4 meters? Okay. The formula for a period the pendulum is seen right here, 2 pi times the square root of the length of the gravity. So we're going to do 2 pi times the square root of our length, which is 2.4, over the gravity, which is 9.81. Okay, so please note that the length of a pendulum, if we were to make some sort of oscillation back and forth like such, is L. Okay, and it's being pulled down by an acceleration. In this case, this acceleration is the acceleration due to gravity. Now this can change depending upon what planet you're on, if you're on an asteroid or something like that, or on the moon, um, for example. So anywhere where the acceleration, or the local acceleration of gravity is different, this g right here can definitely change. So for this problem, we're going to take 2 pi, so 2 pi, and we're going to multiply that by the square root of 2.4 divided by 9.81, okay? And whenever we do that, we get roughly, approximately, 3.1 seconds. So it will take that pendulum 3.1 seconds to make one complete oscillation. Okay. How long should a pendulum be in order to swing back and forth at a period of 1.6 seconds? Now this is a little bit more tricky because we have to do a derivation. No, sorry, excuse me, not really derivation, but we have to rearrange this formula to solve for the length. Now, the length is underneath the square root, so we're going to have to square it to get rid of it. Now, please do not make the mistake. Whenever you square something, notice we're squaring this quantity right here, but we also have to square the period and this pi. This is one my students commonly miss. So it gives us with this. So period squared squared to 4 squared, squared times the gravity. So in this case, rearranging this, we get this. Gravity times period squared divided by 4 pi squared will give me the length. And this is a very, very important formula. So this formula is the exact same thing as this formula. It's just written and solved for a different variable. Okay, so now going to solve for this, all I have to do is take in my gravity, which is 9.81 times um, the period squared divided by 4 times pi squared. And that should give me how long that period has to be. So 9.81 times 1.6 squared divided by 4 times pi squared. And that gives me a length of approximately 0 0.64 meters. Okay, so again, same equation, just solve for a different variable. A grandfather clock needs to have a period of one second. So this is um, how old clocks used to keep time in seconds. They had a very, very long um, pivot arm or pendulum arm, and they had a big bob on the bottom of it. It was weighted. And um, the length of that, they could stretch it out. They could get it to be exactly one second. So this is what we're going to tackle with this problem. So um, what length does this bob you know, have to be from the pivot point to cause an oscillation of one second. So we're going to use the same equation we derived above. So again, if you're a physics student, um, it's very important to know how to get from this equation to this, but when you're doing a worksheet or something like that, um, it's, I like to circle this equation because I know I'm going to go back to it again. Otherwise, I'll have to do this whole, you know, re-resolving for length again. Okay, so now I can just do 9.81 times 1 squared divided by 5 by 4 squared. And that will tell me how long the pendulum arm has to be in the fork to make a period of 1 second. So 9.81 times 1 squared, that's just 1 divided by 5 times pi squared. We get approximately 0 0.25 meters. So a quarter of a meter will give me a period of, of 1 second. Okay? Alright, number four, if the clock from the previous, oh sorry, question three, 
So yeah, if the clock from question three was taken to the moon where gravity is 1.7 meters per second squared, what length should the pendulum have? Okay. So again, if you want to take this problem, now we're going to a, an area where it's a different, different acceleration of gravity. So now it's not 9.81, it's 1.7. So the question, actually it's 1.65. Um, but I guess we're going to round up to 1.7 for this problem. So how long would the arm have to be on the moon so the clock still keeps an accurate time of one second? All right, so our length, we're still using that same equation. Except now our gravity is different. We want one second and still four pi squared. Now, if you think about it, we're getting a bigger number on top Oh, sorry, there's a bigger number on top in the previous problem, and now we're getting a smaller number. Okay, so that means our length should change. Okay, so we do 1.7 divided by. So 1.7 divided by pi squared. And that gives me a length that's actually 0 0.04 meters. There we go. So it's a very, very, it's only four centimeters. So, okay, so it's a very, very small. All oh, right, and that makes sense. So you're getting a smaller number on top, the same number on bottom, thus the length is going to drastically decrease. Okay. All right, number five. A Newton's cradle is one of those things that goes back and forth. Can they hit another ball, bearing and comes off, um, or attached to strings? Each string has a length of 0.2 meters. What's the period of their swing? So we're going to go back and use the basic formula. So again, that's 0 0.12 divided by 9.81. I'm assuming we're back on Earth. So when we plug this into our calculators, it gives me a period of roughly 0 0.69 seconds, approximately. All right. All right. And that's the first uh, five pro problems of this ultimate pendulum worksheet. Um, the solution will be attached on the back, and if you have any more questions, more questions will flow. Thank you for watching.